He's some burns. He's praying. Hold on. He's praying. Oh, wait a second. I was removing yeah. him. He's praying. Let, let him pray in peace. <laughs> He's praying. A few moments later. All right. Uh, Jason has finished praying. Hello, folks. How are you doing, mate? How are you? God bless. Um, I just want to say one or two things before I ask two questions. I was watching uh, Ijaz's debate uh, with Sam Samoa. And I've watched a few other debates of Ijaz. I just want to say, Ijaz, and I mean this sincerely, I'm really amazed at your memory, your encyclopedia memory. It's quite, quite amazing, bro. So I don't know how you do it, but it's, uh, it's, it's quite, quite amazing. Drug, drugs. Uh, I've got <laughs> two questions. I've just been honest. I've just been honest, drugs. <laughs> hey, I've got two questions. One on verisimilitude. And one on mor on uh, moral motive, on the verisimilitude. I've just looked just now while you were talking about thirty-seven verses of the Quran, about commentating about Jesus, and I was just wondering, uh, from your perspective, do you think the Quran has verisimilitude? Do, do you think the Quran has background information about first-century Judaism? So, for, so for example. If you look at the New Testament, it mentions uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, it, the specifics like that. I was just reading, it, it, mentions, uh, it mentions John, it mentions the word disciple, it mentions the word Messiah, it mentions quite a lot about Old Testament patriarchs. But I don't see much verisimilitude, I don't see much background, historical background to the life of Jesus in the Quran. No sermons, there's no like sermons really. The parables, there's no real parables. Uh, and also like there's only one or two miracles. So how do you cross that bar? The second one is uh, with the Apostle Paul. Are we on a theme today? What I think motive, the theme has been the same the whole what, way, man. What motive do you think he had for saying what he said. Oh. Like, what, what motive do you think he had? So those are the two questions. The similitude, the background to the New Testament, the Old uh, and the Quran about the historical Jesus. Why isn't there detail in the Quran? Secondly, the morality of, of Paul. What motive did he have, according to you? So with regards to your first question, is it necessary for the Quran to have to mention everything that's in the Bible? No, it doesn't have to mention everything, but you would think if it, it mentions more about Jesus than Muhammad, so obviously the Quran has a high view of Jesus. You'd think okay, that if what, it is mentioning is, whoa, things whoa, whoa, about whoa, 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 Jason, Jason, it speaks more about Moses than Jesus. Okay, I'm not, I'm just saying, but it well, mentions a lot so, about Jesus. Yeah. No, but no, okay, but it speaks I appreciate more about that. Moses. Well, one sec, one sec. I, I appreciate I, I've, got that. Point, I've got a point I need to make here. So, the, the, the problem with the argument that you're making is is that there's lots of things that it could not mention. Yeah? And if it wasn't just copy-paste, everything that was in the Bible is just basically in the Qur'an, and the Qur'an comes as a, a repeat of your Bible, um, then you couldn't make that argument. But if it misses anything, then you could always come along and say, well, why is that not mentioned? The point is, is that there's no need for it to be mentioned. Why? Why does it happen? Well, well, do, do, do you think? Do you think? Do you think Jesus was Jewish? No, we think he was a Muslim. No, his tribe. His right. tribe so, is ethnicity. Ethnicity, yeah, ethnicity. Ethnicity. Jewish. We grant. He could be, yeah, just, so, just, just, to, you, just to be you, clear, you here, just, if I could answer the question quickly, forgive me, but all of the details that the Bible uses does not contribute to Christianity or your beliefs about Jesus. It's Ramsey. More true. Right, the Quran presents Bible. less background data about Jesus, but more Muslims believe in him consistently than Christians do with more data about him in the Bible. So, the argument really doesn't hold up to the water, Jason. The second thing is, yeah, the Bible repeats itself. You know, the Synoptic Gospels it repeats the same details without benefit, the same thing twice. And usually, this tends to produce contradictions, which is why we as Muslims don't believe in it. So I don't see your argument as being consistent here. Uh, more background okay, information uh, does not correlate with more accuracy in the truth of belief. But uh, before I finish, I think Yusuf was finishing his point. 
before we had interjected. Let him finish, inshallah. So I'm like, yeah, no, that was my only point. It's just that, like, the, you could make this argument if it misses anything. And if it did mention the things that you wanted it to mention now, you could pull up and say, well, it didn't mention this. And we could just go on ad infinitum. The main point is, is there's nothing necessary about it having to be mentioned. There's no need for it. Like, God could re uh, reveal another scripture if he so willed and not mention anything that he'd mentioned in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in the, in the Quran or anything. And it could just be completely new. And the fact that there is no mention of the previous things doesn't negate it from being scripture. If it comes from God, it comes from God. And it's missing things or having things in there that weren't mentioned or having things repeated. That's completely irrelevant, I think, to whether or not that is revelation. And one other point I just want to make, because it's, it's really funny. Uh, Brother Rumsey has come on looking like a, a a Christian saint picture with like the, the little yeah, halo. Yeah, I was thinking that. It looks like it's got a saint, <laughs> like a halo the behind logo, The logo behind you, the way you were positioned, it made it look like one of their iconographies, like, you know, oh, where they have like... Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I, uh, I, I meant to do that. I totally meant to do that. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, so that would be my. Uh, by the way, Chavash, by the way, by the way, funny thing, Pastor Jason, uh, I've been seeing you arguing with these guys for years and years now. Years ago, I was watching them do it, and now I'm on the panel watching you do it. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, bro. Nice to meet you, bro. Okay, so so here's the thing you've got to understand: Was the Quran is the Quran a biography of Jesus? No, not at all. Is it a biography of Muhammad? Peace be upon him. No. Is it a biography of Moses? No. It isn't a biography of anyone specific. It's a biography of man. And so the previous prophets are mentioned to bring their um, lessons to us. So, for example, through Prophet Joseph, we learn patience, yeah, and through 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 um, through hardship. So we learn the lessons of of the previous prophets. We don't need to know their whole biography. That's that's the point of the Quran. And then we have the Hadith, which I've just I mean, like I said, it's like a theme tonight. And we have the Hadith that tells us the biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Yeah. So the Quran will speak about Moses. So as I've just said to you, the Quran speaks more about Moses than Jesus. Now, if you're trying to use that as a standard, oh, it speaks more about Jesus than Muhammad, then you would have to use that same standard and say, well, actually, maybe Moses is more important than Jesus. And you clearly don't believe that. So this is why I get concerned when people come and they try to paradigm shift us into ignoring our paradigm and try to drag us into your paradigm, then try to hold us accountable to our values based upon your paradigm you created. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. As, for, as for your Paul question, Paul had no authority to do anything. He wanted authority. He wanted people to listen to him. He wanted to be a somebody because he was a nobody. Yeah. And you can see throughout his letters. Yeah. That that's what he did. He was complaining when people were listening to other people rather than himself. Yeah. So, yeah, this is this is my motivation. Paul, I don't believe, was a Pharisee. 100% I don't believe that. I don't believe he was uh, some zealot Jew who was who was persecuting these people. I don't believe that at all. Yeah. So, again, if you want to work within, if you want to ask me that question and in my paradigm, yeah, you're talking about a completely different guy that you've been taught to believe who Paul was. Okay. Can I come back? I've listened to you all respectfully and appreciate what you just said. I think that... Uh, that if you read the Gnostic Gospels, the Gospel of Thomas and many of the Gnostic Gospels, there's very little vicissitude. There's very little background information concerning the first century Judaism. Um, so, you know, so to me, it seems, this is just my opinion, humble opinion, that there must have been some kind of sects of Christ, Christian Jewish sects that Muhammad knew because the Quran seems to imitate the Gnostic Gospels where there's very little vicissitude. Because uh, you'd think that that if Jesus lived during the during Second Temple Judaism, you, you'd at least feel like if the Quran's revealed, okay, I, I get what your point, uh, it, the Quran you're saying is trying to just give the main points, but there's no Jewish flavor to any, to, to a very few of the statements, not, not all of them, there's one or two that do have a Jewish flavor. Like it mentions uh, John, John the Baptist in the Quran, but you'd think there'd be more of a Jewish flavor to 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 the to the statements like of first century Judaism. Have you read the Quran? And yeah, in the Quran, yeah, yeah. Have you read yeah. it? And, and 
I've just I've just read while you were talking tonight. I just so read, have you read the Quran? So I've read the Quran, but I, I've, I've just read, read thirty seven. Oh, what, what's in Surah yeah. Baqarah? What's Surah Baqarah all about? Well, I can't I can't remember I can't remember the names of the things you know. The first Surah but you read. Just read. The first Surah you read. What's just, it about? The first one is about uh, worshiping Allah, giving honor to Allah. No, not Fatiha. But, I'm talking about Baqarah. Sorry, the second Surah. But, but can, can I just finish, please? That, oh, no, because you're making that, a point that the Quran doesn't speak about the Jews and how they were and this, that, the other. And then there's a no, whole chapter not, about no, them. No, 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 no. The longest listen, chapter in the no, Quran is about them. No, of course there's a Jewish background. I'm on about first century Judaism, Hamza. That's my specific point. First century Judaism. That's what I'm on about, my friend. Yeah. What's Secondly, on po- the, the, like the, the men, there were Pharisees, there were Sadducees, there were there were all sorts of different people. There were various names during that time. Well, what would that matter? Uh, that was why does popular. that matter? Who cares? Well, why does this matter in the Quran? Yes. But who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what yeah, I can, can, Like, why is this? Because uh, the thing is, as well, the the thing you you need to remember, and someone made this comment in the the chat, so. The Quran was revealed for all of mankind, not just the Jews. So it's taking a universal standpoint with its revelation because it's meant for all peoples. Of all and time. It's lack of focus on these like different minority groups but, that lived but, in a particular but, place. You're saying it's that, irrelevant. It doesn't uh, that doesn't add or take away from saying, the notion that, of it being revelation. But, but I see what you're saying, Yusuf, and I appreciate your point. But there are, there are, there are Jason Burns. Look who it is. Jason. He bought, he bought me some figs once in Manchester. I was, spo- I was supposed to come on the show before, but I've been a bit busy. I just, I just tuned in and I saw you. I thought I have to come on and see Jason Burns. Jason, do you remember you were nearly a Muslim in Manchester City Centre many, many years ago? You nearly accepted Islam. Do you remember that? I can't remember, bro. I, listen, bro, I'm, I'm the strongest Christian you'll ever be, John. After I mean, that thinking, encounter man. you are, yeah. You know... Sometimes um, I have, John, sometimes I have conflicts for my dinner. Sometimes, you know, I'm standing for Jesus on conflicts. Yeah. So, um, do you do you remember? Do you remember when I saved you from the atheist? Oh, I do. And then I think a few weeks later, you bought me some figs on the day before, did it? Or he was very aggressive, wasn't he? Subhanallah, very aggressive that guy. Yeah, you was him. you was very very nice, bro. You was very nice, John. So look, Jason, I just caught Jason, wind I'll of never you forget saying. It. I just caught wind of you saying something on the lines of Muhammad copying something from the Gnostic Christians. So wh- where are you going with that argument? What what are you trying to say? I'm I'm just I'm just saying you know the word for similitude that historians use background information. All I'm saying is is that argument that it, the Quran is just giving the basic points about Jesus, but the Quran is make does make historical claims. It's making a historical claim that uh, in Surah Four that Jesus didn't die. It makes claim. It, it makes statements about Jesus' disciples. But you so believe you, think that that more, you believe he's still alive, right? Yeah, but you think that there'd be more detail, John, more what? detail of the flavor of the time. But it's not as I'm saying. It's, the not, Gnostic, it's not a biography. The Gnostics, the Gnostics have the same style as the Quran. They don't have much verisimilitude. Not at all. Not at all. So, and then the morality issue, you haven't answered the question, what was Paul's motive? What was his motive, Hamza? Power. We've resolved the first, because you got you asked two questions. You're asking about the similitude thing, and, that, and then you asked about the Paul's motive. But it feels like we've not really concluded the first one, and you're just bouncing off now to the Paul one. I think we should yeah. probably yeah. focus on. Mashallah. Salam alaikum. It's been a long time. Welcome back to Ramadan. John, John, John it's, been, it's been four years since I last saw you in Canada. I just got the Google memories. It so goes up the photos of me bribing you with Starbucks. If you don't know, <laughs> this man is addicted to a flat white 
I don't know why. Sorry, I'm sorry. Did, I, did I hear Starbucks? <laughs> did I hear Starbucks? Well, I'm sorry. No, no, this is, uh, ago, you know. Four years ago. Four, four years, years ago. ago. Your selective hearing, Ramsey. Book stars. Books for the stars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come back. Let me know when you come back, John. I miss your company very much. Inshallah. It's very nice to see, hear from you, Jazz. It's been a long time. Inshallah. And I'm missing my Dawa over Dunya hoodie. I have it somewhere. I was going to pull it out, Ramsey. I have it. I promise you. Sure you are. Sure you is, are. I, I got too fat, so it no longer fits me. So I don't think you want me to look like a stocky penguin on the stream. <laughs> My bad. I, I was assuming. I assumed the best in you, so I got you a small size. I was. I was assuming the best in you. You know what I'm saying? Alhamdulillah. I appreciate it, my brother. Please um, continue, guys. Please continue. I have an answer to this question, by the way. I mean, it's in Paul versus Paul and Jesus. But no, look, before we do the Paul one, James let's Daniel satisfy. Tabor. Let's satisfy the first yeah. part first. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. As you said, so let's satisfy the first part about similitude and stuff, and then if he wants to take that argument back and deal with the Paul, then we can do that. And then he can come up with agnostics as well and tell yeah. me how what no, he's going to come up with agnostics first. He's tell gonna, me how what if Ibn Alpha was agnostic? What 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 belief did he oh. have that that matches any historical Christian sect? Come, come on, on, Jason. Come on, Jason. No, I, I, Can't beat your the, tongue. The, issue, the, the, the specific. <laughs> what I'm on about when I'm, I'm dealing with the agnostics, I'm I'm being specific about the word verisimilitude, verisimilitude. Yeah, not the actual teaching. I'm on about for similitude. That's very similar in the sense that they're very general, the Gnostic Gospels. There's very little detail about first century Jerusalem. For example, if you study the four Gospels, they mention Jerusalem over 70 times. If you study the Gnostic Gospels, they hardly ever mention Jerusalem. So there's very little similitude. Have you, read the, you, know, no, have you read the Gospel of Thomas? Like, quite literally, there is a book uh, called The Fifth Gospel by the guys from the Jesus Seminar that shows that, that they overlap quite significantly. So I, I don't think you, you're you actually uh, accurate in what you're saying. Have you read the book, The Fifth Gospel? I've, I've, well, I've, to be honest, I used to debate atheists, so I've read all the, the Gnostic Gospels, and I wrote a paper on the resurrection, and it's got a list and information there. Can you there, answer my question? I read them all. Like, can you answer and my I question? Went through them all with, the I went through them all when I was debating atheists. Okay. And Did you read the book, I, The Fifth I, Gospel? You know, so... But I can't, I can't remember book? all of them right at this moment in time, but I have so read them all. Book, yeah, so that book examines the Gospel of Thomas alongside the four canonical Gospels in details, in subject matter, and they overlap quite significantly. And they actually point out that some people in the early church actually thought that it was authentic, maybe not from Thomas himself, <coughs> but that it was a genuine Gospel. So the book, The Fifth Gospel, I think you should take a look at that because it answers your question and it, if, it if, contradicts the claim okay. you're making that it does not contain detail. That would be false. If you read the Gospel of Thomas, for example, there's very little detail about Jerusalem, about Second Temple Jerusalem, Judaism, and the culture. There are lots of quotations of Give Matthew. Give a reference to that, please. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of quotations of the Gospels, the four Gospels, particularly Matthew, I think, in the Gospel of Thomas, but I'm on about the similitude, not quotations give, from the Gospel. Give me a reference. Yeah, give the, me the, a the, reference the, the, that says the, that well, the Gospel of Thomas lacks geographical and background details. I'll just take. So well, I'm you can read, you can read, you can read it for yourself. I'm, really, I'm, I'm giving you an go, academic reference. And read it. Gospel. Well, I'm giving you. Well, just take Jerusalem. Can, can you can you give us? No, wait, we're talking. We're yeah. talking about primary source. Do you primary have any source. examples you of Thomas? Gnostic? Do you have any examples of uh, Gnostic writings in the Arabic language from the time of the Prophet? I mean, it, it'd be a total. I mean, he has. If you're claiming he got it from there, we don't have nothing from that time in Arabic. We don't even have anything from the from about the Bible in Arabic at that time. If I could, maybe this reminds me a lot about the debate that um, what's his name, Mike Lacona and Bart Ehrman had years back, um, when essentially Mike Lacona had brought up the point that the New Testament, particularly the four Gospels, mention numerous details about Roman Palestine and Rome and you know certain geographical features and. You know certain details about the located geogra geographic location of you know of Jesus' Jesus's setting, and Bart Ehrman came along and essentially made the point that you know that doesn't prove its reliability. Even if a book mentions 
you know, perfectly describes the geographic location and the archae, you know, the, the architecture maybe, and, you know, whatever the case, maybe the environment, the setting very well, that's neither here nor there. That doesn't prove or disprove the reliability of the text. Well, my argument was about, well, if you remember my, my, my point, my question is about the similitude. I'm not arguing about the veracity of the Quran or the veracity of the New Testament. I'm just inquiring why, why, why isn't there any detail in the Quran or not much detail? You've answered that. I don't think it's an ade adequate answer. On the reliability of the New Testament and Bar Ehrman, I'm happy to engage in that, but that's a different a different no, no, issue about the how about this? I mean, Jason, this is one of those like like how about this? I I, I didn't author the book to add. So how about this? You can ask the author on the day of judgment, you can leave us a note in the suggestion box and say, next time talk about talk about Palestine or talk about ancient Judaism, or I don't know what whatever the, whatever complaints you have, you can leave them for God Almighty. I'm just we're just here giving you the message. If you don't like it, okay. I mean, you don't complain to us. We didn't write the message. I'm, we're just the message, not the messenger, but you know what I'm saying? We're just messengers of the message. I'm not complaining. It's an honest question concerning no, I, I, looking, okay. at, complaining, looking at the I mean, looking, looking, looking at the Gnostic Gospels, looking at the Quran, and, yeah. and, and just the setting about the similitude. It was just a question about the similitude. I understand. And you've I'm answered saying. it. And I, yeah. I appreciate the answer. And I thank you for that. Could we go on to Paul? Uh, let me just correct myself. The name of the book is The Five Gospels. What did Jesus really say? The search for the authentic words of Jesus um, by Robert Funk. Just to be clear, so I get the name of the book correct. Um, hope that, does, did everyone understand the correction I made? Yeah. No. Sorry, can can, can I can I recommend a book? Can you trust the Gospels by Peter Williams? He goes into the issue of the similitude. Can you trust the Gospels by why, Peter Williams? Why does Why does that matter? Though I I answered your question, right? Because, because did, did Jesus live, live in the first century? Did he walk in the first century? Did he did he did he talk to the Pharisees? Did he did he engage himself in Jewish culture? So you would think that if the Quran is making any statement, it would at least have a smattering, a flavor of the Jewish culture of that time. You're saying One it's second. not relevant. I hear that. Uh, Hamza, can yeah, you just raise the voice on my microphone, please? Uh, there's all black, there's a similar oh, so you, do you, do you think Jesus was a Pharisee? I've got your full blood. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Jesus, I I think Jesus, Jesus was, was a Pharisee. Refuting the Pharisee. I, I I think he was a Pharisee. Why? Uh, because his teachings were all Pharisee. I think he was a Pharisee. Uh, I think he was a Pharisee. Uh, because his teachings were all Pharisee. And you mean the biblical Jesus or the the real Jesus? Uh, no, the New Testament Jesus. Um, his teachings are all Pharisee. Well, that 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 would make. And sense. And then when you read when you read when you read the New Testament. If you're using that as your basis of information about Jesus in that time, you see Pharisees warning him. You see Pharisees petitioning for the release of his companions. You, you, there's nothing in the New Testament that indicates that Jesus was teaching against Pharisee teachings or the Pharisees had a problem with him. There's nothing. There's no re. Sorry, that's the wrong thing. There's no reason. Nothing he does goes against Pharisee teachings. Nothing. I, I just want to say I really appreciate that. We're having a dialogue and engaging. I really appreciate that. Thank you. What about Paul's motive? Yeah, usually we don't give you the time of day, do we? Yeah. So you see, when it comes to Paul now, Paul wasn't a Pharisee. But what was you know, Paul's motive? Why did he do say and do what he did? What was his motive? Was he after sex? Was he after money? Was he after power? What was his motive? I mean, look, I'm just spitballing here, but I mean, I can think of many motives as to why someone would say God's law is kind of not needed anymore and we don't have to follow it. No, no. He wanted to be a leader of some churches or for whatever reason. He wanted some kind of power, too, some, but... kind, some kind of position, which he never had. I mean, I, I can so, find... So in, in 2 Corinthians 11, I think it is, or and 12 and 13, he talked about the suffering that he goes through, is being whipped and things. You don't think he, he suffered or anything? You don't think he was beat up? Because why, why would he allow himself to be beat up for a lie or, or deception? Cause, cause he's, because basically Paul is, um, you can see it in his letters, that he's jealous of uh, other people writing, saying you should be listening to me, why are you listening to them? You, see, you, you can see what he's doing. Well, one thing I'll, I'll say, you, one thing I'll say, Jason, yeah. is as you know, there were many writings around at that time. There was, you know, at this time, the Bible had not been compiled, right? 
Yeah. yeah. You know, especially the New Testament, even the Old Testament, it had not been compiled compiled at that time. So there were many different writings available at that time. All the different stray sects, all the heretical groups, which the likes of Bart Ehrman and everyone else speaks about, which you don't accept, they were around at that time. And Paul did his writing in the same way all them other heretical groups did. And it just so happened that the, the group of Christians ended up taking that flavor of Christianity, which ended up being be, becoming adopted by the Roman Empire. And then, and then they searched for the text afterwards. You see, the thing with Christianity, it starts with its Akida and then formed its text afterwards. So they're like, okay, we need some text to back this up. We need some scripture. So let's use Paul, let's use Tom, Dick and Harry, Matthew, Matt, Luke and John, put them all together and find it and, and, and actually compile a text that agrees with our Akedah that we made up. So Paul at the time was not imagining I'm going to be in, I'm going to be at the forefront of this, this uh, victorious sect 2000 years down the line. And the most important person of, uh, in, in the New Testament, he wasn't writing like that. He was writing what he be personally believed. All the other stray sects were writing what they believed. It just so happened to be that the Roman Empire took the turn of believing in what Paul believes, and they chose his document to actually be in that scripture. Let's not let's not pretend that the Bible existed, you know, before before the uh, and it was compiled before the Akida. The Akida came first, and they chose what they want in their book, and they and just by they didn't choose. The books that go against their Akita, all them heretical groups, them so-called heretical groups you don't you don't agree with, the ones which the which are spoken about in the Talmud that believe that um uh, Jesus came with a, a new book which which abrogates the Torah. Okay, that, that not that sect what's mentioned in the Talmud, or another sect which is mentioned by uh, Bishop Eusebius, which also says Jesus, there was a group that believed Jesus received a, an injil or a book um uh, from God. Not them, not that, not them Christians, but it was the ones that that believed in the the Akira of the time. So, you know, that you put in Paul on this pedestal. Go back to Jesus. Go back to what Jesus worshipped. Jesus prayed to God. Stop being dumb. Worship the God that Jesus prayed to. It's simple. Okay. Can I can I say something in reply now? Just just quickly, Jason, to answer your question, because you did ask it to be. Okay. Fair. Hamza, could you just share my screen that I put up there? Right. It's very important to understand one thing about Paul, right? When he was confronted with different people in his own time, choosing other leaders, what was his message to them? This is in First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 12 to 15. Now, I mean this, that each of you is saying, I am with Paul, or I am with Apollos, or I am with Cephas, or I am with Christ. Is Christ divided? Paul wasn't crucified for you, was he? Or were you in fact baptized in the name of Paul? No, I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. So when push came to shove, and people were saying we are of this sect or of that sect, he said no, we are actually of one body. So Paul isn't special in this case. He's saying go with Cephas. Go with Apollos, it's fine. <coughs> but then came the problem that he uh, later wrote about, if I scroll down, it's in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. As a result of his message, what happened? It says verbatim, you know that everyone in the province of Asia deserted me, including Phagellus and Hermogenes. So even at the end of his life, people had deserted him. So to say that he was special or unique exactly. or distinctive, doesn't really flow with what he himself has stated. You come to that conclusion now, after you know the epistles had been gathered, like John, like John had Hamza, Hamza's son had mentioned, right? That comes later. That comes after. There's a period of that development. I think Michael Bird even mentions and agrees with that. That's why I will conclude with this. Your question is answered in the book James and Paul by James Daniel Tabor. He simply points out. That Paul was trying to find a way to allow Judaism to survive in a Greco Roman world. He opened the door to Jew and Gentile to make it easy for them for the faith to survive. And I think that argument is convincing. He was sincere in what he believed, but he was wrong. And that can apply to many people today, much like yourself, Jason. Okay, I, I appreciate that the scholarly 
thoughtful that you said Ijaz and the historical background about the canon uh, John. But if you look at like false prophets, like just take Joseph Smith, for example, just an example. He told his he told his his guys to go from America to to Preston in UK. When they went to Preston, he knocked on the door of the wives of of his guys and said, "God's told me that you're to marry me," and he had sex with them. So that false prophet had a motive for being a false for, for being a prophet, which was sex. When you look at when you look at Paul, are you a prophet, Jason? No, can, Jason, can I just can I Jason, just, answer can the I, question. Can I, can I, can I, Listen, listen, listen. Do you yeah. believe you are a prophet? Can, can I just finish my point, please? Because I listen to both of it's you, just, please. Okay, just quickly, just quickly. Just quickly, Jason. Do you believe that you're a prophet? I'm not a prophet, no. Okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, but so, do you have but do you have prophets in your church who are alive today? Can, can I can I finish? Just answer Please. the question. Do you, do you have prophets in your church? No, no I'm, right. I'm a Calvinist. I'm reformed. Okay, we don't okay. believe that prophets are prophets. Okay, okay. No problem. So, you're, so you're, what you're I'm saying Calvin. is... What I, yeah, I'm reformed. I'm a Calvinist, yeah. Did you choose to be a Calvinist? Can I finish my point, did guys? I listened to it, Jazz and John with greatest respect, and it was interesting and informative what they said. But I'm just saying that false prophets often have deeper motives, sex, money, and power. You, Paul in Philippians said, for me to live is Christ. He was always talking about Christ. He was living for Christ. He suffered for Christ. You don't see him banging, having sex, boom, boom, boom. Uh, you don't see him taking loads of money and being rich. And power, what power? He, 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 subvert, he, he submitted himself to, to the the other apostles. So those three motives, sex, money, and power, Why was he going which to a lot, of false, prophet, a lot of false prophets have, he just he didn't have that. He just said for me to live his Christ, to die his gain, Philippians. So that's my point, well, guys, just, and I appreciate you what you said. everything John said to you. And me. John, John, no, no, no before you, just John no, explained to just you. Giving a, I'm no, giving no, a no. counterfactual argument. I'm no, giving no, no. a different argument. No, no, but, no, but what John is saying... What John said to you was that Paul was just giving his flavor. He wasn't claiming to be a prophet. He was just no, but, he was just giving his version of Christianity. But the word, but he was called an apostle. Yeah. Who by? He was called an apostle. Who called him an apostle? And and if Who you read the Quran, if you read, I don't know if it's in the Quran, but it's in the Who Hadith. Who calls Paul Muhammad an apostle? Was called an apostle. Who calls Paul but an the, apostle? The, the, it was, Jason, but you can Paul you can reduce apostle? it to guys. Who? We're descending Jason. into. Jason, we Jason. had a lovely conversation. No, 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 no. I'm interested in your lovely conversation. You said he was called an apostle by who? <laughs> by who? It, it was it was accepted by Peter in no, Galatians. Who called Paul an apostle? Who called him apostle? He was accepted. No, by, no. You said Jerusalem. he was called an apostle. You said he was called an apostle. So either take it back that you're wrong, or tell us who called him. He's an apostle. No, so you're Calvinist. Calvin. Woman, 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 woman. Like, Cal we, we, we both know it's the mirror who told him he was an apostle. We both know this. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, sorry. Oh, it what? was the mirror wait, that wait. told him he was an apostle. He declared Listen. himself an apostle. No one called him an apostle. No, Listen, but he was accepted as Calvinist. an apostle in the. You're Calvinist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and you you believe his wrong. prophet. You believe his prophets after Jesus. Yes. There were prophets in the time of the New Testament, but but after the so after the Bible, it's there's no prophets because we we believe we believe in sola scriptura. There's Bible alone. We don't believe that there are prophets today. That's an extra revelation. Okay, so when did the prophethood stop? At Jesus or at Paul? No, the, there were prophets. There were well, uh, in the New Testament when the canon of Scripture uh, was. Uh, was given, which was in the first century. That's when the the uh, the prophets stopped. When we had the canon, not the canon so, in three hundred so AD. When the scriptures were given. Okay, so when's your final? When's the final? What's the name of your final prophet? The final prophet, according to you, the seal of the prophets is a. No, a according to you, we're asking you. So tell us what we believe. We're asking what you believe. <laughs> 
I don't understand your question, John. I'm trying to understand okay, what you're trying me, to get at. Let me break it down. Who's the final prophet for Jason Burns? The final, How, the main final prophet no, is Jesus. Final, he was the final. He was, no, who is the final the after prophet. Jesus? The, you said there's still prophets my, after Jesus. Why did it stop? And who is the last one? There were those in the book of Acts. There were prophets who? there. And then I can't remember. But after that, after after the uh, New New Testament, then there's no more prophets. After so the New had, Testament. So who said that? Jesus. No, the scripture is the final authority, this is a not, joke. not the prophet. This is a joke. You have him, you're pulling my it's not a joke. It, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's a hard hominem now. My main question was about the similitude and Paul, and you've answered that, guys. Going on to the prophets and all this is, is, a, is going away from what we were talking about. No, no, no. It's questioning all right. your position, but, mate. I think you need reforming again. My, my, my position is, is reform. Can I ask your question as a Calvinist? Can I ask your question as a Calvinist? Can I choose to be a Christian? Can you choose to be a Christian? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 1. No, uh, no, I'm verse, interested in, I'm interested in your Calvinism, mate. I'm not interested in, I'm interested in Calvinism. I'm going to give you Calvinism. Yeah, give me Calvinism. Can I choose to be a Christian? I'm going to give it to you now. Go on then. Just give me a second. I can tell you the answer. It says is Ephesians 1.4. No. <laughs> it says no. Ephesians 1.4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we shall be holy without blame before him in love. So we believe in election before the beginning of time. The, right. the Trinity, to... Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The Father, oh. Son, and Holy Spirit had a plan can of salvation. And, and can I so before the beginning, can, Jason, can I finish? That's my question. No, I'm interested. So Jason, I'm starts asking a simple with his question. Belief. Can I choose to be a Christian? I, I, What's let me mean? finish. You've got to let me finish. No, imagine. You I don't need to explain your answer. I want your answer. Can I choose to be a Christian? No, it has to be based on exegesis, not eisegesis. Oh, I'm the asking, exegesis I'm not in, in the reasons behind your answer. I'm not interested in the reasons behind your answer. No, I just want to hear your it's answer. It's clear. Can I choose to be a Christian? Before the beginning of time. Jason, can, can I choose I to be a Christian? No. Can I choose to be can a Christian? Finish? Jason? No. And let, can I choose no, to be a Christian? No, you have to have the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. Answer my question, mate. The Can I choose to be a Christian according to Calvinism? Ephesians 1 4. We Can are elected before be the Christian? beginning of time. Answer the question. In, is it a yes or even no? in Islam? Yes you have no? talked about Can I choose to be a Christian? It's God that chooses you first. Can I choose to yes be a Christian? or no? Yes or no, Jason? The answer is, is no, because God chooses you first. See, and then when you've been drawn the by him, no. then you believe. So I can't choose to be a Christian. Only by the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit right. opens so your God eyes. God doesn't choose it, so God has to choose me to be a Christian. <clears throat> I've just read to you Ephesians 1 right. 4. Does God have to choose me to be a Christian? God chose his elect no. before the beginning yeah, right, of time. Right, right. If God doesn't choose me, yeah, if God doesn't choose me, what happens to me? Now you're talking about the doctrine of reprobation. What happens to and me? And if you look at but in Islam, in the in the golden Which age, Islam, you have talked you about. As a no, Calvinist, you had, I'm asking no. you as a Calvinist. If God doesn't choose me to be a Christian, I'm not elected. Can I still go to heaven? But you don't understand the doctrine can I, of election. Can I still go to heaven or not? Can I still go to heaven or not? You're not listening. Jason, I'm asking a simple question. There is, you're a Calvinist based upon the principle of election. If I'm not chosen by God, yeah, to be a Christian. I'm not just a Christian, your version of Christianity. If God doesn't choose me for this, yeah, can I go to heaven? Let, let's look at Judas. Judas. See you, mate. Yeah. See you, mate. Oof. I'm not going to answer direct questions. You don't stay. Simple as that, mate. Never change, Jason. Never change. Oh, no, honestly, honestly. Did you, see, did you see the one when he froze? You know, like this. And we're like, is he frozen? And then Sharif goes, his curtains, his curtains are moving. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that today? I didn't see that. No, 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 no. He's a well. He's like this. He's talking. He was. I asked him a question. He went. And we're like, is he frozen? And then she's no, no. Look, his curtains are going like this. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. But listen, it's very, very simple. Sorry, this is the arena, yeah? You don't come on here and waffle, yeah? If, ask, if you ask, ask the question, answer the question. Then you can justify your answer. So if I say, for example, um, 
can I choose to be a Christian? His answer should be, well, <laughs> not really. No, you can't because you have to be chosen by God to be a Christian according to what I believe as a Calvinist. That's what he should have said. No, don't give me the justification before your answer. Give me your answer, then you can justify it with whatever nonsense you, you wish to justify it with. Quoting Ephesians like it means anything. I'm sorry, so, it's been like two years that you've ex you've told him this, and he still doesn't understand the principle. Give the answer, then the explanation. It's not hard. It's not everyone hard. Else, it everyone just. else understands it. Yeah, I just sorry. wanted to ask you, Jazz, what, what is this, the Calvinists, they believe, so they believe that after Jesus is prophets, but they don't believe these prophets today. So, in Calvinism, there were prophets in the time of the apostles, but they are no longer prophets today, if I'm not mistaken. They believe the period of prophecy has come to an end. I believe James White is also a Calvinist, from what I remember correctly. Where did he get that from? Yeah, you know the funny thing about James White? He, he, he had a debate with Zaki. Uh, uh, right, and then he said and at the he, end, he, I remember the video. The video you spoke to, I remember. I pray for you. And then when Isaac, I said, Why did you say you pray for him? You don't believe he can choose to be a Christian, mate. That's a good one. Uh, and he, well, he said, Well, it's just a figure of speech. <laughs> he said, like, actually admitted <laughs> he's not going to pray for him because he knows it's pointless. <laughs> that it's just because he's not been elected. It's like this is Calvinism. This is like this. This is like what? So God chose a sect of people. I'm sorry, a select people. Right, you guys are going to be Calvinists. Everyone else is going to hell. Yeah, pretty Seriously, much. Seriously, that's it. If you're not chosen, you can't choose. Like, what? That, that's the thing. Why is, why, here's the thing. They preach to us with the impression that we can choose to convert to Christianity. But if we're that... totally unredeemable, we don't have a choice whatsoever. So preaching to us is irrelevant. That's Look, Jason's been through leave all us the be. sects. If we're doomed, then leave us be. You know, he's, he's been through all the different sects of Christianity. Really? Yeah, he, he, he was, um, I've, I've known him for years, like 15 years, because I used to give Dow on the same street as he did. I used to have my Dow table on Market Street in Manchester. He had his on the other side. And every week he'd come down and give me, you know, Bible bash and have a back and forth. But he was always, he was always, pre he was always a nice oh, guy, you know, he's never nasty. Um, but he was, he, he was, he seemed interested at one point in Islam. And then all of a sudden, he got into the evangelical Christianity and now he's a Calvinist. So I don't know what's going on. I don't believe he'll persist in his Calvinism. I mean, no. Long story short, Calvinism. May Allah guide him. It, say that again. May Allah guide him. I mean, I mean let's, let's I mean. leave it at that.